Hello everyone and welcome back to Divide and Conquer. I am Sir Agamund and I want to start this video off by saying thank you to everyone in the comments who had mentioned that we can actually train Barrow Whites here in Cardoom. I did not know that. Um, that pretty much proves how much Angmar I really play, honestly. I haven't given them too much of a shot. Um, but if we go to the Shrines of Melkor and simply get the temple here, we can train Barrow Whites. So there is a Definite argument to be made for getting that out as soon as possible. Uh, I think we'll just go ahead after the guard barracks is done. Just make that because it is only three turns to do. And then from there we can work on finishing out the barracks itself. Which means we would need this lord hall and then the next tier of barracks. But that means that everything at Karn Doom will be fully maxed. We'll be able to pump out Barrow Whites as often as the recruitment pools allow us, which is great because they have free upkeep, so it is very worthwhile to have those everywhere. Now we're picking up right where we left off, so we are stuck here right now. I think we're at an end, uh, end turn. We'll go ahead and send down my scout to the south here, get some vision on Oost, Sewell, and Weathertop. It's good to scout this place early. It's also a very tough place to assault. Uh, because even though this is a village, it uses the battle map of the fort. So when you attack Osul, you need to walk all the way up to the top of that tower. And it doesn't matter what faction you are. You could be dwarves or elves. Your soldiers will be exhausted by the time they get to the top of that. So it gives the defenders a huge advantage. Now over here in the east, I did just notice, um, it looks like the high elves might actually be eyeing more of a tarth here. Which is fine with me if they want to expand there and then start uh, building up infrastructure. I'm fine with that because that just means we will save money there and we can allocate our funds elsewhere. We'd only be losing the 400 gold from the city plus whatever small amount of trade that it gives to uh, Mount Graham. Which probably isn't that much at the, uh, at the end of the day. Now, I thought of a little question to ask all of you for this video, just something a little fun to do, get a little interaction if you know what I mean. If you could live anywhere on Middle Earth, where would you want to live? Uh, why would that be? Um, and by Middle Earth, I mean basically what you can see on the little map down here. Uh, so, obviously, not the Undying Lands, that's cheating. Uh, but where would you want to live and why? I would probably personally pick either Minas Tirith or Edoras myself. Um, just because, you know, they're, they're really cool cities. Minas Tirith would be really cool to live in. Uh, anyway, let's go on and continue. Um, Goba Drain finished repairing its walls there. And are the elves going to go for it? I am not so sure. We'll have to see. We can always take it back later. But if they want to send some, some a smaller force at us, that's fine. We will only lose some thralls. And I don't really care about holding on to it. Now, first of all, we need to get onto a Athelan here and take this place out. We'll send in our reinforcements here and simply begin the assault. Captain Flanagan, with his 814 men of Rudauer, no less, uh, defending against Morholt the Hillman. This is going to be a tough fight because they do have landsmen, which are powerful. They have throwing axes and are very good in melee with an okay defense skill, as well as these Huskarls. We don't have... Too much ranged pressure outside of our wargs, so we can shoot them down. But in melee, it might be a bit brutal. In fact, we might want to siege that out. Now that I think about it, maybe get them to come out of the tent. It's tough because these are strong units indeed, but we also just need to go for it. Let's see if we can take it. I will see you guys on the battlefield. Alright, and we will go ahead and start deployment here. It's a very foggy day, but a very open battle map. This will be good for our wargs, not good for the enemy. We have to decide where do we want to send our infantry. I'm thinking maybe this way and over here. We'll have Morholt probably not lead the charge because of those throwing axes, but he's got plenty of hillmen that can take those for him. We got some Rudar pikemen. They'll lead uh, this attack on this side with our savages and we will throw some Angmar infantry over here as well. So that'll be group one, group two, and then uh, Drangu and his wargs are gonna really need to carry us today, aren't they? Come on, Drangu, you can do it. Shoot down these rebellious hillmen that do not join the cause of the Iron Crown. Uh, you all move up here. Now, uh, yeah, this is not a good city. I mean, it's definitely just a bunch of tents. 
more of a ranger outpost. Oh, that's kind of cool. There's like these uh, little 2D textures for bows and crossbows just chilling on this little tent, I guess. I guess it's supposed to be like a weapon rack, but it looks a little off how it's just all two-dimensional. Little campfire over here, uh, just blazing out and uh, smoking everywhere. Very nice stuff. I believe you could also put like archers up on this hill and shoot down as well, but we don't have that uh, luxury at the moment. We only have these poor chaps right here. And ideally, I'd prefer to shoot these huskarls. But these landsmen are going to be pretty threatening as well, so really we just need to kill as many as we can with Drangu. And are they actually in range of Drangu? I don't think they are. I think it just. I think the AI just thinks it's in range. If we can pull them out though, that means that we can charge them, which will be kind of preferred. And we're just going to have to go in fast and go in hard. Why don't you all get some distance here? Drag them away if possible. How many have we killed? 6%? That is not terrible. It is not terrible at all. Now to give you all a little bit of my, uh, I guess, I, I don't want to say insider knowledge. It feels like I'm exploiting secrets. <laughs> so they're not really that secret, and I'm sure Gal will probably talk about it at some point. But the Dunland uh, scripts are now pretty much on their way. Uh, it's about time because the Wild Men were getting revamped for version 5. And so some of those features uh, shall be... Oops, I do not want to have my pikemen fight their pikemen, but we have no choice. I guess we got to start sending in our infantry anyway. Why don't you guys run that way, wargs? Why don't you run into these... Actually, don't run into those huskarls. It's a bad idea. Um, anyway, was I saying Dunland? Yeah, that's right. So... The way the Dunland script will basically work is you need to first prove your might to Saruman by taking a certain number of regions. Following that, uh, you will be incentivized to attack Rohan, um, in which case you are um, supposed to go attack at, uh, what do you call it, uh, Helm's Deep, and then, um, what's the other place called? There's Helm's Deep and then Edoras, and if you take those two places and potentially two other Rohan regions, that will um, trigger Isengard to become active, in which case they will have the Fangorn Forest type region called Rockburg, and they shall openly declare war on um, Lorien. Oh wow, we took some damage here. Oh, let's use Iron Fist. He definitely took some damage, that is true. Why don't you guys Go ahead and charge into those Huskarls now. Save some ammo. Where are we? And yeah, another thing with the script is that Isengard will be initially... Um, wow, we destroyed them over here, huh? Isengard will initially be passive, but then once you take like four Rohan settlements, including Helmsteep and Edoras, then they will be active from there. And they'll give you... Uh, if you if you get like eight regions, you'll unlock the Orthanc Guard as a unit, which is pretty cool. Um, and then... Uh, let's start shooting these guys from a bit of a distance now, shall we? Uh, and you, I think you also get some Enidwythian units if you have eight regions. Uh, it hasn't been made yet, but this is just the current uh, the plan. So, you know, if I'm not supposed to be talking about this, uh, I'm sure someone will let me know. <laughs> yeah, from what I've been told, though, and I should probably check with Lynx, who is now the modding leader, is that Gallo always told me that they would tell me specifically or let everyone know if there's something that shouldn't be leaked out. So um, I'm sure there's no issue, but if there is, then, you know, they'll they'll silence me one way or another. Keep on shooting those landsmen, get some distance. Looks like we are doing all right. I think that, uh, what do you call it? I think when we used our, I'm drawing a blank again. I think when we used Iron Fist, it really gave us a huge advantage. Well, Drango, keep on shooting. I think you're almost out of ammo. You are. And so are these wargs here, so we might as well stop shooting with those. Morhold, do you have another Iron Fist? Not yet, but we are getting there. For our savages, the combined arm strategy of our pikes and clubs is doing great so far. Oh, wow, that, that dude just got sent flying, and we barely caught the end of that. That Drangu is engaged. He's, uh, he's a pretty good matchup for uh, Rudar Landsman, I believe. Alright, let's try to get our Anmar infantry on there, and let's throw some javelins on them with these warg skirmishers. 
about 70 of these men left if we start chucking javelins. Hopefully we can kill a few more. Although honestly, orc javelins aren't that great. Like, they're kind of mediocre. I'm not going to lie there. But still, I love javelins. I'm still hoping that one day that these things get a proper texture. Because this is seriously just an untextured stick. And I hope one day we get proper textures for javelins. I think 30 Age Reforged has those, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not super well versed in Reforged. I do want to do some multiplayer battles in it. Um, I have it installed, at least an older version. I don't know if the current version I have is as up to date um, with however it's currently going. But if anyone is interested in doing like Third Age Reforged battles with me, just let me know and uh, can message me on Discord. I'm in the Divide and Conquer Discord under my name here. Uh, you can just at me on there or send me a direct message. Um, if that's something you ever want to do, I am um, looking... I, I would rather get more in touch with the, with the community and play more games rather than just being here on single player divide and conquer. I always thought multiplayer divide and conquer could be kind of fun if... Sure, it might not be completely balanced, but something that I'd, I'd always be interested in doing, especially with the community. I did. I, we did have a thing with the other YouTubers and we are planning to do a kind of a YouTuber battle Featuring Commander Soul, Izzy, myself, uh, I believe Accounting for Games said that he would be interested as well. So we might have a cool free-for-all battle one of these days. Um, we're looking to do it on the Conflicts of Ariador um, submod, which is actually in development from Commander Soul himself. And if you guys are interested, if I remember, I will put a link to his channel in the description below. Um, otherwise, just look him up in case I do forget. After all, this is, what, 13 minutes in? We've got, like, an hour to do recording, so... We'll see if I remember. If not, uh, you know, it just is what it is. But, Commander Soul, I am here for you. And, uh, you know, whatever clout I can give to everyone, I will give. <laughs> Alright, let's turn this to time six. This battle is over. We lost 249 brave souls to 814. Radar Huskarls, led by Morhold, actually got 102 casualties. Mountain Graham Raiders, 232. No surprises there. I mean, it is Drangu the Bloody. Anwarim Infantry, claiming 183 themselves. So, very solid infantry. We need to get more of those guys out here. Radar Pikemen kind of traded poorly because they were fighting other Pikemen. But our Savages did alright. Finally, Hillmen taking a lot of damage at 114 casualties, but claiming 90 themselves. Now, obviously, once we get some armor on these chaps, they'll be a lot better. I did also bring up in our uh, beta tester discussions about how the Hillman Barracks, in my opinion, should be lowered down a tier. You should probably be able to get the Rudar Landsmen and Rudar Huskarls at the same tier as the Iron Crown units, which I count as tier 3, uh, because it takes a tier 3 town hall to get to, and I like that, like that kind of ordering around. Um, because waiting till you get to your pure elites just for that camp, it's a little ridiculous, I think. Uh, well, we are just going to occupy this camp. No sense in exterminating it or anything. But we should probably grab... Uh, it's Shrine of Melkor or Meeting Hall. I guess we'll get the Meeting Hall. Uh, just because it gives us free upkeep. And then Law. And we have just enough Melkor Shadow here to have okay enough control. But that's great. We are expanding into all of this territory. Next, we'll be just going due south. As well as taking the north down, which is four nasty rain over here, Dead Man's Dyke. We could probably let them build it up a bit longer, though. There's no sense to rush into it too quickly. Moonborn is over here. Uh, do we have any other generals? No, we don't. Can you leave Goba Drain? You can. Let's have you set up a watchtower over here. We do have uh, Freerost over here in Oilad, uh, but. Uh, I worry about taking that too soon because the dwarves are literally right there and we'd be on their doorstep. I'm not sure if we're ready to be fighting the dwarves. I mean, sure, we could rush them, but... Uh, we have 4,000 gold, which is actually quite a lot. So we could get units, we could save it. Um, what could we buy? We could get more things at Latash, but that's not really necessary. I guess Karn Doom will be the best place to spend this money. Getting more Angworm infantry and more Angworm archers. That still leaves us with... 2,000 gold, and we're going to be at about 6,600 next turn, which is plenty, in my opinion. And then soon we can pump out those Iron Crown units from Karn Doom. Uh, everything else is upgrading. Is there anyone else we could move? We could send Lord Sild 
down south a bit with his army. We'll leave some hillmen, I guess. Why don't you go down here, start putting up your watchtowers. We need vision. I want vision over all of this land. The rest of these hillmen, they could try to defend more of a tarth, but eh, what's the point? Well, if we can't get more wargs, ooh, one more turn and then we can do that, so we will. We can also just retrain these because they are veterans. Let's go ahead and spend our money there. That still leaves us with a decent amount of funds, and if we send an emissary to the Woodland Realm, we'll get 750 gold, so I will humor our council and go for that, and we might as well bleed them for a thousand gold on our map information. I see no issue with this. After all, it gets to a point in the campaign where I start paying for map information because I want to paint the map, so, you know, it's an early game investment. It gives us a little bit of a head start, I suppose. We actually have a few units hanging out here that we could direct wherever we want as well. Perhaps these wargs could go back for retraining or for armor, or we could just send them up to the front line to help Drangu over here in a fill-in. And we could just merge them with these two units. That might not be a bad call. They are fast, so yeah, let's go ahead and send them out north. And then we'll probably... I kind of want to get these guys down to this fort, but it's three turns that they would not be getting free upkeep. So is it worth it? Not really sure. Go ahead and do it. I think there's also... Yeah, there is a fort right here next to Kamath Bryn we could occupy and just distract the elves as well. Um, If they don't attack us, it might be worth it just to build something here. Maybe just put the Mason's Hall down real quick, or maybe the Leather Tanner. I'll just put that down. I have the money, and if they attack us, we'll just cancel it. Alright, and uh, looks like Darwinian have picked the Northmen choice. I think this is relatively new to version 5. I can't remember when this was added, but uh, this text message um, now shows up um, telling you what Darwinian have picked. Uh, so the Northmen now march to war, which means that they have taken the city of Mordadel, which is very cool. Uh, we can send an emissary to Dale, we'll get some more money. Dale's school, I think, you know, I could see us allying with them at some point and just turning into a giant war in the north here, where we have Dale perhaps side with us and turn against Erebor. Who knows? Maybe something to consider in the future. Alright, now we have a lot of construction to go through here, and we can finally get our Iron Crown units. They do take two turns to make, but that is not bad. Uh, so let's get that Temple of Melkor. It's cheap. It uh, gives us Barrow Whites, so that is great. The Tash finally got its mines. If we go to Mining Network, that doubles the income that they make roughly. Might be worth it in the future. Um, we could also go for another War Camp, maybe a Hillman Camp up here. Kinda tough to decide. We also have a lot of our other settlements that we need to work on for economies. So like, let's get the grain exchange here in Barkeleg. Angsul has a Mason's Hall done. Let's get the land clearance. That way it gets some population growth. And that leaves Nokfo or Agla, which got its meeting hall. Which means we have free upkeep here. And we could grab, like, a work camp to get more works on the front lines. I think that's what we'll do here. Although it's literally right there next to Mount Graham. Maybe it would be better to do that somewhere like Gobadrain, maybe? Obedrim might be a good place to actually do wargs rather than Nokfurgla. Yeah, I, I think that's actually a better call. Let's do it over here in Gobadrain, and we can't actually afford it because we don't have the Mason's Hall. How unfortunate. Well, let's work on that. And here we could go for... Could grab the barracks. Uh, could do just dirt pass and farming. Wouldn't be a bad idea just to improve our income. Yeah, I think I like the farms. Although, actually, I want to get some Iron Crown units out, so let's... Save money. We can afford two of them. Let's pick let's pick long moment, because I know those are gonna be very useful. And halberds. We're not really gonna need those just yet, I feel. So let's grab Iron Crown Warriors. And this is actually a fairly decent army that we have sitting in here. Thralls are kinda trash, but uh, we could send these guys up to a fort or send them south. And then join up with a Thelon or maybe join at Nokfa or Glaw. We're going to need some strong units to go take Ost Soul. So, uh, yeah, let's have these guys go south this way. Captain's going to send his wargs up to Drangu over here. And is it worth it? Should we just kill these guys off? Just Dunedain Wardens and Bandits. I think we should just have Drangu's retinue take care of them. So let's just do that real quick. It's just 111 soldiers, but it'll be a very quick battle that'll give us some money.
We'll start deployments. This is going to be super quick. I might as well just keep it on time six for the whole battle. We'll just do that. Run in there, boys. Start topping, or start shooting, I guess. Bandit should die pretty quickly. Do worry about my control, though, if I do keep it on time six. Let's start moving our soldiers away. The enemy are badly and they're already mostly dead anyway. Still, might as well avoid casualties where possible. Work skirmishers are already out of ammo. You guys just keep shooting down those bandits. You guys keep shooting down those wardens. And they are dead, basically. You guys run that way. And they are routing, so... We could honestly capture them and just see what money we could get. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Where's those bandits? One bandit and, like, what, two wardens? Let's see how much we'll get for that. The one of these men is a captain. Not a single soul got out of way. I'm not going to bother looking at the stats. There's no point in that battle. And I wonder what this was supposed to be. Is this supposed to be Gondolin? Because I know Gondolin was hid... Hidden between a bunch of valleys here, and there's a dragon of some sort, and presumably a Balrog here? Can't really tell for sure. Two Balrogs, maybe? Um, a little lesser known fact about Tolkien's Legendarium is that there also are vampires uh, and werewolves, but uh, they're not really common in the time of the uh, Third Age. They're more of a Second Age, First Age sort of thing. Yeah, 20 gold. Yeah, give us that 20 gold. Lovely. That'll fund our watchtower that we're going to put, uh, right here. Oh, right, right there. We need to be on our territory, Dragon. Perfect. Yeah, that ransom paid for the watchtower, and they're right there. If we wanted to, we could really just chase them down and be annoying. <laughs> we do some faction announcements. Herrick got a Angmarum Lord retinue. That's pretty cool. What does that give us? Morale, acumen, and troop training. Um, so that's not bad. Architect is good for construction costs. Overseer, so he's going to be good for just hanging out here in Karn Doom. Now, governors are now very powerful in this version. I think that's all we can really get at the moment. Um, Hoonborn, why don't you put one more watchtower just up there? And uh, you're looking great, fantastic. Now, I uh, I want to send you there. Put your watchtower down. Now, something uh, I don't know for sure if it's going to be in or not, but it has been discussed, is percent potentially some Losoth units, aka the Iceman of Forest Shell, may be featured in version 5. Maybe indeed, and uh, I don't think I will say what the units are yet. If you want to know what they might be, uh, you'll have to wait for episode 4. So that gives you a good reason to stick around now, doesn't it? But there's a potential of two Iceman units coming to the mod um, that w should be coming in the future. Again, can't guarantee that it's going to happen, but it seemed like a lot of the developer team was very interested in it and wants to do it. So we might finally get some representation from this side of the world. Is that all we can do? I think we need to send our diplomat to Dale, don't we? Yeah, how close are you? Oh, you're already almost there. Perfect. Yes. Fantastic. Brilliant. It looks like Amladris isn't even going to attack us, so we might want to actually push for them soon. Um, Lord Sild might just go over here, put a watchtower down. And we are waiting for reinforcements to head south as well. Osul is going to be a very good place to take, though. Depending on... Like, they already have this place built up. It's got the Carpenter's Hut. Dunedain War Camp will give us some law. And it will be a big blow to the Dunedain if we can take that out. As well as there should be watchtowers all over this place. I'm not really 100% sure. Doesn't look like there is. That was a request a while ago to add a bunch of watchtowers to this region. Oh, and there's High Chieftain Uglag. Oh, there's a giant Dunedain army here. They got journeymen. Do they get those as hieries? Or how does that work? Must be Beacon of Hope. But if High Chieftain Uglag wants to go mess up the Dunedain for us, I will gladly take his assistance. Moria is another faction that's supposed to be getting some changes at some point. Um, but with the new team, they haven't really said anything about them. So it might be a future version. But I'd, I'd like to see Moria get their revamp in this version as well. Because it was promised that the five least popular factions would get some uh, polishing. And those five were, of course, the three wild men factions of Anduin, Enidwyth, and Dunland as well as the Variags of Kond, and then the Goblins of Moria. 
And if you liked my Goblins and Warrior campaign, I'm sorry it ended so abruptly without even a, a proper ending. Uh, I would like to revisit them when they get changed. But uh, I was really just spamming tons of armies in that campaign. All right, the Dark Lord loves us. We're doing great. And we got our Blacksmith in Mount Graham, which is awesome. I kind of want to upgrade these Raiders here to have more armor. So we will do that. Now, can we get the highest tier? Oh, it is just available. Seven turns to do it. Um, I kind of want it though. I really want that. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's do it. After all, was this the only building that we finished? No, we had two others. More of a Tarth finished its Mason's Hall, and a Thillon got its meeting hall. Oh, that's fine. We'll get more money. I really want the full armor on those wargs. That way, they are not so uh, squishy. Wargs go hang out there. Drangu is going to need to take those wargs and uh, start messing around with the Dunedain here. I'm going to have him go this way though and put down a watchtower in that corner. A lord still puts one there. Basically just waiting for his reinforcements to come down. Ooh, and there's High King Aragorn himself with his famed Agrey company. It would be unfortunate to have to kill him so early and just so... But, uh, you know, if we have the chance, we'll go for it. Did Uglak get wrecked? I think he did. Oh, no, he's actually besieging Finnish Durinan. Interesting. He might, uh, I don't think he's going to take it. He's got Snaga. But it'd be interesting to see what they can do down there. Captain Randolph, garrison your forces over here. That way we are ready to fight the, um, men of Imladris. They're not the men, but the, uh, elves. I think overall we're looking great. We're sending our reinforcements down. I kind of want the chainmail armor upgrades, but that would take a few turns to divert from and get them those, so we'll wait for now. Now, Hoonvorn, should we start moving towards Dead Man's Dyke, or should we try to grab Freerost really early? That's kind of a tough choice. Why don't you retreat to Goba Drain for now? I mean, you get like a bunch of free upkeep there. We're going to focus on going just south for now, so that's what we will do. Um, our diplomat, you need to move to Dale. Yes, my lord. Go ahead and talk to them. Let's get some trade rights. And uh, they're bankrupt, but maybe we can get 800 gold for our map information. Perfect. I will take it. And that gave us, what, another 750 gold? Yeah, so now we actually have some money. Let's go ahead and upgrade Moabar Tarth. I'm willing to invest in it now. Question is, do we get the Shrine of Melkor? It's kind of a hard choice, just because if Imladris takes it, that building will get destroyed. But the others will not. And it's also like the only building we could get right now. Yeah, let's take it. Two turns is pretty quick, and we're honestly working on defending this place now and working for Kamath Bryn, so we might as well. I think that's it. Oh, Litash needs a building too, but we don't have any money. That'll have to wait. And a gift from the council, we get a thousand gold. Thank you, council. That uh, will really help us today, actually. Because we need to build. Roads are tempting here, but they only give us 200 gold. That's way too much. Might want to grab that master mason's hall, make everything else cheaper. I love that building way too much. Now, RR the Nine and Imla or not Imladris, but uh, Dolomroth are at war, but what else is new? Shall we go ahead and get Dirt Pass here in Nokvaraglaw? I think we should. And I believe our Iron Crown units are done. Perfect. We could grab a Halberd here, and I think that's a good call. That way we have the full retinue. And we're about to finish that Dark Temple, so I think we might want to save our money. Oh, Goba Drain is almost ready. We could... Oh, we got the Mason's Hall. We could get the Shrine. For all, we definitely need some population change here. We'll do that. Where's our spy? Where are you? You're down here. So it looks like, uh, yeah, the Dunedain might lose their capital to the goblins. Wouldn't that be unfortunate? The goblins are actually pouring in the east. Looks like they're trying to take Teardu, and so goblins of Moria being very strong right now. I think Lord Sild will find that he will have a very easy time taking Amon Sul, and we moved too close to that, uh, Lumber yard right here, so we can't put a watchtower down. That's fine. Drangu will pick up the slack. Uh, why can we not put one down? There? We actually have zero money. What? What did we just spend it on? That was really all of our money. Eight hundred and fifty gold. Uh, I guess the watchtower can wait. We don't necessarily need it right this moment. 
Um, but who is ready? These guys got their armor so they can head out soon. I'm to actually just go for Kamath Brand. It's right there. But the elves, I know they still have a lot of stuff in this area. I want Osul and then we can kind of just converge and surround this region here, cutting off the Dunedain from the west. And then we're already at Bridge. 23 turns in. We've really expanded quickly. I feel like we're playing just like the AI does when the AI plays, uh... They play the, um, Angmar. They just go very aggressive, very fast. I mean, Morholt, you might just want to go out there. Maybe start raiding. Is that town down there? It's tempting. We'll leave him to garrison in the Thillin for now. Let him just kind of hang out. Crazy that actually took all of our money, though. And 24 turns in. This campaign's going a lot better than I had honestly thought. Our temple is done, so we can get Barrow Whites. And, oh, wow, it is... 50 turns to wait for the next one and 1100 gold to recruit but that's not bad especially since if i recall correctly if we take mangolin we unlock faster recruitment for these barrow whites so it makes sense that you'd, you'd only get them very rarely because they are such a powerful unit but we will take them now and we need to keep upgrading this place so let us grab the lord's hull would this make us train them any quicker it potentially might, but I'm not going to test that out. Orvatarth got its shrine, so it's um, getting ready to go. We'll leave it as it is. Everything else is probably going to have to wait. We could get the shrine of Melkor here at Angsul as well, although it's already mostly our population. Let's get another smoking house. That way we can get another spy out here. I want to get a second one down for the southwest. Hans and Amroth are at war. Of course they are. Alright, Drangu, let's get that watchtower now. And I want to kind of send him out here to start looking at the land here. I'll camp you on that watchtower for now. Osul is getting a little more garrisoned, but uh, we'll, we'll be taking over that very soon. Let's put this watchtower right there. And our reinforcements are in Barkele. Or did we get them to Nokfavirglaw? We did. Perfect. You guys head down there. That gives Lord Sild a pretty... It's an alright army. It's not that great. We will send these wargs down, though, to go hang out with Drangu. And Morholt and Hunvor will probably just hold the western borders for now. Although we might relieve Morholt of some of his Angmarum infantry. In fact, yes, we will. Anyone else at Karn Doom that we could send out? We could put our Iron Crown units in the fort. And that means that we can send out Agendower. It's going to cost us some money. And I might wait till we get the Halberds, but then uh, we can finally get him on the front lines. And I think we'll use Agendower himself to go attack Ambeladris. He'll be the man that leads that place. So we'll prepare a force with him to work on the elves. Of course, our logistics are going to need some work getting our elites from Karn Doom down there. But all in all, I think it'll be a very good mission for him and get his feet finally wet in this campaign. All right, and welcome to turn 25, and uh, we're doing great. Population is fifth overall. Production sucks, but uh, besides that, we're all right. Dale and Dorgaldur are at war, and Harad and the Ardenheim are allies. Of course they are. Um, at least our Iron Crown Halberds are ready to roll. And, oh, we just got a new general. Where did you come from? Coming of age, okay. I guess you're just the son of someone. I wonder who you're... You're Numenorian. Who do we have that's Numenorian? Don't tell me you're the son of Hoonvorn. <laughs> that would be so, so weird. Maybe it's Lord Sild? No, you're Angmarim. Yes, Not Herrick. Who the heck are you the or who the heck are you the son of to be Numenorian? <laughs> I wonder who he's actually put under. That's Is he under Agendower? Is he Agendower's son? Oh, that's so strange. He must be. General Loyal, renowned father, it's gotta be. He's gotta be the son of Agendower, so. Bunazir, where should we direct you? Maybe to Mount Graham? Yeah, I like that. Let's put you over that way. Down a watchtower if you wouldn't mind. Ah, oh, we can get more snowwork spears. I kind of want those. What do we have for construction now? Boba Drain got its shrine of Belcor, so it will start to fix itself. 4,200 gold. Everything important is already making buildings. Get a hillman camp at a and that will be a good call. Actually, let's get that mason's hall, because that is expensive. 
That is very expensive for two generic units. I mean, I guess they're pretty useful. Armor piercing and a pikeman unit. That They are pretty good. And we're at infantry. Go that way. You guys join with Drangu, and we have some Dunedain to fight. Yes. Drangu, why don't you uh, stay on that tower for now. In fact, take that fort and hang out in there for a turn and save your upkeep. We are very close to uh, taking Ost Sewell, and now Lord Sild has a very decent army. But what else could we spend money on? I guess we could train. Can't really get anything else there. We could get more orcs. Might not be a bad call. Orc fighters and orc hunters. Yeah, let's do that. Karn Doom, can you train anything else? Could get more Angworm infantry, or we could send some more hillmen down. Might not be a bad call to reinforce uh, Morholt himself. Maybe Morholt's objective will be to take Dead Man's Dyke. I think that's a good call. He's going to definitely need more Hellman for that, though. We might as well take all of them. I think that's it for this turn. They're going by pretty quick, guys, I know. Uh, but we are moving quick in this campaign. Alright, and given the current state of our campaign, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with preparing an army to also backstab Gundabad over here. Because this is a very good city to take. Very tempting, actually. I want those ice trolls that we can get. Or snow trolls, I mean. Alright, now what did we finish? Uh, dirt Pass, very good. We're starting to get economy. Um, what should we get here? Could get another Hillman camp just to keep pumping them out, or we could get a proper barracks. Could also go for wargs. Ah, oh, it's tough. It's very tough. Catapults, actually, artillery might not be a bad call. Ideally, it's not the best place to do it, but, I mean, it's better than nowhere. Let's go for it. Let's grab artillery there. We might want some at Gobadrine also. It's close to the dwarves, and we're going to need it for the dwarves. All right, Captain, keep heading down south. Drangu, make your way towards the Dunedain. See if you can't uh, drag them out from Ost Sewell early. Lord Sild, go ahead and attack this man right there. Captain Orthor does have uh, Dunedain Rangers, Cardalon Sentinels, and Wardens. So we're going to take some early missile um, damage. But we have archers of our own, and we have decent armored infantry. I'll probably try to use as many of the snow works here as I can, since we won't be able to replenish them. We do outnumber them like almost 3 to 1. This will be a good battle to get some money and cut down some of those poor, poor Dunedain. Now, if I were controlling the Dunedain, I might be able to win this battle. It's kind of a stretch, though. Just given the sheer numbers, but Dunedain Rangers are some of the best. And, uh, well, there goes Discord. Hope you guys didn't hear that, but I know it probably did. Now, Sild, so go ahead and do a loose formation just like that. We'll put our other archers maybe on this flank in loose formation. And then we'll have Snowark Spears up in the front line. Along with this unit of Angmar infantry, we probably won't need anything else. Although we might take these two units and see if we can flank those uh, archers. I like that. Have you guys on that side, you guys over there, you guys right there. Archers run up that way. We just need to simply surround them and get on those archers before they skirmish away and make us run forever. Taking care of the Dunedain Wardens will be pretty straightforward once we get into melee with them. It's just taking care of archers that love to run for miles and miles. That makes it a bit difficult. Where are those rangers? Shouldn't they be in here somewhere? Oh, there they are. Dunedain Rangers. And I do love these models. I believe these were added in 4.5. They used to have an older model that looked a little bit gross. In fact, I can't see it here. That's the new upload. But yeah, their older model, I mean, it was okay, but this is definitely way better. Alright, still keep pushing up, please, while our archers pressure in from the other flank. In fact, go ahead and shoot at those rangers. But you should almost be in range yourself, huh? Yeah, shoot at those Dunedain rangers. I know it's kind of uphill. But the good thing about shooting at these rangers is they are very, very lightly armored, so... They do have 7 attack, 7 missile, 12 defense. 
They inspire other troops, of course they do. I forget what their specialty is. Like, each ranger has some specialty. I think the Dunedain rangers have the highest melee attack. Uh, it might be accuracy. I'd have to go back and look at the 4.5 patch notes for what they specifically get. I want to say that's what they do, though. I want to say they get the highest melee attack, but I could be wrong. Like, I know the Athala rangers have the best, uh, what do you call it? The Athala Rangers have the best movement speed and range of any Ranger. I think the Nimrodel Mariners are like the most heavily armored, so they kind of get that advantage. Right, we haven't killed that many Rangers at the end of the day. Only about 20 of them have fallen so far, but not bad. We are also finally getting into melee now. I'm still to go ahead and uh, reposition now. But you guys need to collapse on those wardens. We need to get our other two um, Angmar infantries on the far flank here if we're going to have any hopes of capturing these rangers. At least for now, we can simply just keep shooting at these shielded Cardalon Sentinels. So not the best target, honestly. Given the fact that they do have shields. Let's go ahead and move up our archers a little bit to get slightly better shots. Lord Sild should be almost in range. And thankfully he's the one getting shot at. Not our other archers. I want you guys run up that way. And then just get a full surround. Alright guys, shoot at those Dunedain rangers. Lord Sild, are you not in range yet? You should be. Start running, uh, men of Angmar. Hopefully now, with direct line of sight, our archers will kill these rangers much quicker. Oh yeah, now we're getting some good contact. I mean, if a ranger's perhaps biggest weakness is the fact that they are very lightly armored and susceptible to getting shot at. So you should try to use them from max range whenever possible. You guys head on over that way now. If we can just sandwich them, we will... Be perfect. And the bigger the line we can get, the better. Especially if we can maybe rally them between all of our archers here. And then we are beating these wardens. Actually, no, we are not. We are getting wrecked by these wardens, right? That's okay. Once we get the rest of our infantry around, I think we'll be alright. Come on, keep shooting those rangers. There's still 59 of them. I say they're weak to archers, and yet our archers are taking ages to kill them. I mean, we're doing our best. These are just our basic Angmar marchers. Oh, cool. We actually killed their general. That actually gives us a big advantage. That's where the line told said talked about how uh, their general rode to war on a pony, which he most certainly did not. Alright, these guys. I love seeing all the arrows come flying in. I always forget to install the permanent arrows mod. I love that thing. Alright, you guys run this way now. Lord Sil, come out this way. We're going to need to start shooting these Dunedine Wardens who are wrecking our infantry. Angmar uh, archers go out that way. And, oh, look at that perfect trap. Absolutely perfect. And they are routing now. That was a perfect maneuver. Alright, Cardalon Sentinels here. Looks like they're trying to run away. Here, keep chasing them. Get those Wardens, please. Come on, don't let any of those rangers get away. Capture them all, please. What are you doing? Don't let them slip by you. Capture every man. What are you doing? <laughs> well, some of them got through. That's fine. Right, you guys run in there. Might as well get the dark blades involved. A general? Yeah, you might as well just get into melee. You're going to keep getting shot anyway. We are shooting these wardens, but we should probably just charge them to crush their morale. They are wavering. Cardalon Sentinels here, surrounded now. Come on, and Dunedain wardens are now routing. That's perfect. But we were out of snowworks to capture them. Well, at least now everyone's routing. That's great. Just chase them down, please. Everyone off of fire at will. Only fire if it is necessary. I probably right about now. You guys get into position and fire. 
how are you guys doing? Are you still, you're not gonna be able to, you guys can't catch those. Oh, no, Angmar Marchers, no, please keep shooting at those. And Dark Blade, shoot at those Wardens too. Don't let them get away. Capture as, or kill as many as possible. Last few arrows coming in, they're at 40. And we're out of range. Let's see who got the Golden Crown today. We lost 169 to 300. Most kills, Angmar Marchers here at 60. Most of our casualties were actually just taking prisoners was 22 and 55 here. It was a small, small battle, but still not an easy one, especially when you don't have cavalry. It makes those battles a lot more difficult. Especially given the skill of arms of the Dunedain, they are very, very powerful. All right, and uh, oh, we can get a thousand gold. Tempting, but then we have to fight all these guys on top of the watchtower. We're going to execute them. Third Sword will not be taking prisoners today. Especially when we have to attack this very hard to attack settlement here. At least we have Drangu on his way. But it looks like we do have a few other generals here. Hervigil, you're uh, one of the starting bodyguards, aren't you? And Captain Mylock over here. The remnants of that army on their way. I have 3,200 gold to play with, but I think everything is building except for Aang Sul and Goba Drain. Let's get that war camp here so that we, we have reinforcements and uh, we're we'll gonna leather tanner at Angsul. Why not? Are you keep on moving your way down to the east? We could even get cell swords, that would be pretty good. Maybe we should have him grab mercenaries and throw them in that fort. And moving on to the next turn. We made a lot of progress. We're averaging just about 10 turns per episode. Ah, and yes, we got the Lord's Hall in Karn Doom. So now the choice. Do we go for the mediocre Hillman Barracks for Huskarls and Landsmen? Or do we go for the... Ah, oh, no, we need the Royal Hall. Huh. You know, I guess I was mixed up about the whole Hillman Barracks thing. I had thought that the Lord's Hall, or that the last hall was the one for the Hillman. I was completely mistaken, so Lord's Hall... Royal Hall. Weird. Okay, I am completely mistaken then. So there is one more to do for our last tier there. So I was wrong about that. I don't know why I don't know why I got so confused. I guess I just thought Lord's Hall was the last one. Huh. Well, that is my mistake. So everything is as it should be then. So let us I mean, I'd still probably put this down a little bit lower to put them on the same tier as the Iron Crown units. That's just me. Uh, I We could either upgrade and go straight for Lord's Hall or Royal Hall, or we could grab some better Hillmen. And I kind of want those just so that Morholt has better units for taking that capital there. But at the same time, Guardians of Car and Doom are very good, so let's go for the Royal Hall. That's honestly the better choice. Katash got its Mason's Hall done, so it's uh, it's definitely upgrading. Or Kellogg, let's get a, another spy, and oh, that UI is very gross. That <laughs> Vanilla spy UI. And everything else is probably fine. We could get the Leather Tatter here. I don't think that would upgrade any of these units, though. Not really worth it. Gondor and the Ar Ardenheim are at war. Yes, Alright, uh, we can't afford those mercenaries yet, so just go ahead and hang out in Mount Graham. And uh, he might be a good candidate to take out Kamuth Bryn. We're making about 4,500 gold a turn. We have a very good army here, ready to go. Um, let's send in our Hillman to Hillen. And then put down the Iron Crown Halberdiers here. And we'll send the Barrow Whites up. They do get free upkeep, so it's not like they matter. Now that is five units for Agandar to lead, um, but I want more. We're definitely going to want some Angworm infantry and archers, so let's grab those. Uh, do we get the archers? For Who is on their way? Lord Sild is on his way. Check out Osul and see what it's looking like. They do have Hervigil in there, Arthodyne Footman, Cardalon Sentinels, and they will, of course, get some reinforcements. 
Let's have Drangu head out here, take care of this captain. Just finish him off, get us some money. And then Lord Sil will be right there to attack Osul. He will need Drangu's help, that's for sure. We're gonna need Wargs to help us take that settlement. Right, and go ahead and start your deployment. They have uh, five units of Wargs here, all a little bit messed up, but not too bad. Drangu is, of course, the healthiest with his 71 since he replenishes. So as long as he takes the damage, he is alright. And I love it when the battle maps have the actual road on the map. I think it always looks pretty cool. Hello, the Zunadine Rangers are shooting at our general and not the rest of our weak units. Drangu, get up there. Everyone should be in range pretty soon. Here's that Drangu is a little bit slower than the rest of his battalion. Skirmishers, get a little bit closer, please. And we are definitely killing these rangers. If you can just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and charge those sentinels, why not? Yeah, there we go. That's a lot of damage. Oh, Drangu's getting charged. That's not good. Pull out, please. Oh, we're taking a lot of friendly fire here. Did they really just switch? Did they really just switch to those uh, Cardalon Sentinels? That's fine. At least these Dunedain Wardens shall be dead any moment now. Don't have light armor if you're gonna fight Warg skirmishers. Uh, it's just not a good idea. You guys are all locked onto that unit. Why don't you guys charge those Cardalon Sentinels again one more time and just finish them off. I think that's the general himself too. He should be dead any moment. He's getting javelins tossed in him point blank. And most of these wardens are dead. Let's just put this on time six. This battle is basically done. Oh, and there he goes. Chase him down. Don't let them get away. And there is the battle. Oh, there's one mana left alive. Chase him down, Wargs. Chase him down. Or even throw a javelin in his back. I don't care. Just take him out. This is a clear victory. And clear victory indeed. Most kills. Probably going to those work skirmishers. Yeah. 32 since they did charge right in. Alright, we could ransom them. One soldier in each. 17 gold. Not bad. Peace for all these watchtowers that we, uh... That we get. Uh, head on right there, Lord Sealed. Can you get mercenaries here? Ah, there's cell swords. That's going to be perfect for when we attack. We'll make sure to grab those as soon as we can. I think what we'll do is we'll end the turn, recruit those mercenaries, and then besiege the settlement and save that battle for the next episode. Alright, we are suffering from less income now, but that's fine. The One Ring is now in Minas Tirith. And something I just noticed, and that you may have noticed as well if you've been watching the whole time. We have not been offered a single guild. Guilds have been massively nerfed. Perhaps a bit too far, I feel, because, I mean, we finished the, the like, you know, work on the blacksmiths here at Mount Graham, and we haven't even got, like, a warrior's hut or anything. I guess we actually have the fighter's pit healed. Does that count as a, a guild? I guess it does. Do we actually have any guilds? Maybe that's why. Maybe the Fighter's Pit is literally the only guild that we actually get, and I think it is. Still, I mean, it is something that has been noticed in the other uh, campaigns as well. There's just kind of a lack of guilds in general. Can we even get it here? We can, it's just not possible to get it yet. So we need... It's still a guild, but we have not been offered it. And we do have another spy, so you head on down to the southwest... I think still got a leather tanner, that's fine. What were we gonna do? Oh yeah, we needed to get that uh, diplomat. Ooh, and hello, Gildor. Nice seeing you here. And Moria's just coming in this way as well. They're going in deep, huh? Well, if they want to help us take this settlement, I am not opposed. But we will still take those cell swords. Go ahead and uh, assault that village. Captain, go ahead and join Lord Sild, and then Drangu the Bloody Hop in that army. They will get defenders here, but wow, imagine if we get High Chief and um, Uglag to help us fight this place. That would be amazing. Right now, I found Azir, hop into Mount Graham. And you might be better at more of a Tarth to get us more money, but that's fine. Um, we could train more Wargs. 
Do we have any? Actually, we need to send our money uh, to Latash, don't we? We're going to want better units here if we're going to actually fight against uh, Snow Orcs. Let's grab the barracks at the very least. Captain Eldekar is heading towards Athelan now to join up with Morholt the Hillman. We'll probably need uh, Hoonvord himself to help with Forlosti Rain. And I think that will just about do it for this episode here. We'll send our spy over to the west just to check out Bree, make sure that they're not sending anything crazy our way. They have a decent army here, but nothing too crazy. And Manglin is right there on our front line. Weird that they have catapults. I don't know what's with that. That's really strange. Why are there catapults in Manglin? We may never know. But anyway, this has been Saragamund, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.